All right, what do we have in this drawing? Let's look at the bottom of it first. We see a bunch of blocks joined together with little three-letter abbreviations in each one. I see Alla, Lu, Seer, Lu, Glu, Hiss, Alla. What in the world do those represent? Well, they represent the subunits of, an, of a protein, which would be what? An amino acid. So this represents amino acids joined together. And how many amino acids are joined together in a typical protein? Well, the smallest one would have about 100, and big ones would have hundreds. Hundreds, many hundreds. And so, um, amino acids joined together. And what do we have up in this diagram? We have um, an illustration of three amino acids being joined together. So let's look at the first one here. What do we see? We see all the standard parts of an amino acid plus an ally. What does that represent? Well, it represents the uh, R group of alanine, whatever that might be. And we have other R groups over here. Uh, but when uh, the first amino acid is joined to the second amino acid, uh, how does what, what actually happens? Wow, I see an OH being taken off this carboxyl group. I see a hydrogen being taken off this amino group. Those are joined together to form what? Looks like a molecule of water, and you'd be right. And so that becomes water in the cell. And um, that happens every time two amino acids are joined together. One water molecule is produced or released, we could say. So what actually gets joined together? Well, if we look at this middle diagram here, we see the new bond formed between what and what? Well, it's between uh, this, uh, this carboxyl, uh, the carbon of this carboxyl group and the nitrogen of this amino group is joined together. And that new bond is called a peptide bond. And so the bond between any two amino acids, like this one here as well, is called a peptide bond, which leads to the term polypeptide. What is a peptide bond? It's the bond between any two amino acids. And so when you have many hundreds of amino, amino acids joined together, you have many hundreds of peptide bonds. And so a protein uh, could be called a polypeptide, many peptide bonds. Now, uh, before we leave this little uh, this little picture, let's think about something more fundamental. What would cause these two amino acids to be joined in holy chemical matrimony? Would they do it all by themselves? No, this is a shotgun marriage. They're kind of forced to be joined together. They wouldn't normally do it on themselves, except once in an extremely great while. And so, uh, how does this happen? Well, for, first of all, where are proteins uh, created? They're created in factories. Let's see, what are those factories called again? Oh yeah, cells. They're called cells. And so, uh, <clears throat> inside the cell, there are many assembly lines, including protein assembly lines. And uh, those assembly lines have assembly line workers. And so there are assembly line worker molecules that grab these two amino acids, pull off this water, join these two together, and let them go. Uh, you're saying, Professor, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, uh, we'll call a cell a factory if you want to. Assembly lines, okay. Uh, but factory assembly line workers inside the cell, what are you talking about? Well, we'll learn more about that in the next little video, but that's it for this one.